I've got Danny Gavin from Optage uh, Agency in Houston. Danny, thanks for much for being on the Garlic Marketing Show. My pleasure, Aaron. It's so cool to be here. Awesome. And we were having some fun talking about the pandemic and missing keys before the show. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> it's so weird how life changes and you're like, I don't know where my keys are half the time. I don't, I mean, I didn't know beforehand, but now it's like we're sharing cars all the time and it's. But Danny, so, you know, obviously, and the reason I brought the, you know, pandemic and shutdown stuff is because it really shifted everyone from trade shows and a lot of businesses. And that's what we're going to talk about today is you help people shift, uh, an organization shift from trade shows, driving business to online, and especially LinkedIn. So tell me a little bit about Optage and then let's get into your story. Sure. So... Like I said, I'm Danny Gavin, the founder of Optage, and I started the agency right after I finished my MBA at University of Houston. And um, during that time, I had a really good internship at a company called Blinds.com, which was eventually bought out by Home Depot. And it was a great opportunity. Um, you know, being like a young 20-year-old guy, you're just an intern at a company, but I actually made connect connections and a relationship with the CEO at that time. And he really liked me. And after I left, he started sending people like, hey, here's this young guy, Danny. He knows this stuff, um, you know, and actually he still sends people my way, which is pretty cool. Um, but long story short, I started consulting in digital marketing a couple years later, um, sort of had a partnership with a web development firm that saw that I really knew my stuff and built up um, their digital marketing department. And then a little bit, you know, we've separated our ways and then Optage, as you know it. Um, sort of re was rebirthed in 2017. Me and one of my employees from that other company, you know, went into this little office and we started. And thank God, five years later, um, we're 10 full time. We got a bunch of contractors and we're having a great time helping people with digital marketing. Nice, nice. And you work in healthcare, SaaS and home services. Uh, well, tell me about this, uh, the client that you had that you helped shift from trade shows. Sure. So there's um, a company called Tedin Surgical, and they've been around, I'd imagine, for a good 20 years, maybe a little less than that. And what they do is they create re retractor systems. Um, and what that means are those are systems that allow surgeons, it kind of like pulls the skin away. So it makes it very easy to and very visible so you can go in and do what you need to. You kind of don't think of those things, but hey, it's a really big business. Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, they sell... Um, they have a distributor network um, and they also do a little bit of OEM. So really cool. But traditionally, especially in the medical device space, the big area for marketing is all about trade shows. And this, you know, there's, uh, I don't know, I feel like they're going to trade shows every month, maybe one or two, and they spend a lot of money on trade shows. So typically that's how, you know, you'd go to the trade show, you meet the docs, you meet the distributors, there's lots, lots of drinking after the, after the show. <laughs> and it, it's just, a, you know, it's, it's a great time. But that's typically how relationships and business was done in the medical device industry. And yeah, and then something happened. <laughs> something happened. The pandemic started. And as we know, conferences pretty much shut down. And even when you had like the digital conferences, but I don't, that didn't happen right away in 2020, right? A little bit later. So here's Steven saying, hey, like we're spending 20, 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars on conferences and those are gone. So what are we going to do? So number one, like how are we going to maintain those relationships? How are we going to drum up new business? But also we've got this budget now. So, you know, what are we going to do with it? So uh, they came to us and, and, and I've, I've been doing work for them um, on and off for a good couple of years now. And they said, hey, like what can we do to still maintain, you know, really? And remember, this was literally like, so the pandemic started February, March. This was like April. Danny, what are we going to do? And this was when everyone was home and locked up. And, and basically, we crafted a, a really cool strategy um, with LinkedIn ads. And, and I think interestingly about LinkedIn ads in general is a lot of people don't know them or they've tried it and it hasn't been successful for them. But there's a certain way to approach LinkedIn ads, which I'm sure we'll talk about, Ian, um, that really works and, and really helped them, especially... When we, like think about it, when we're talking about a trade show that's costing around thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars, and you get, you know, you're getting leads at that trade show, you know, I would say your qualified lead, cost per qualified lead, could be anywhere from all money in, like somewhere between one thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars, right? Mm -hmm. So if we can come and bring people 
uh, if we can generate interest through a platform where, yeah, obviously it's not like a $5, you know, cost per lead, but if we can get cost per lead somewhere between a hundred and $200, mm-hmm. I mean, that's crazy. Like we're just yeah. changing the game. Oh, hundred percent. And I mean, what I love about that too, is there's trade shows are like, boom, you get, you get a ton of leads. Now you got to follow up with all the leads all at once. And yes. you have that little bit of time. So it's like flood of business, no business, flood of business, no business. And, and that, that wears on salespeople. I've done that before and it's really cool and you get all excited, but then it's like, okay. And things trail off. And this is really cool because if you can get a consistent business, I'm sure that helped improve their business overall. Yes, definitely. And, and you also have to think about the, when we look at LinkedIn ads and think about yourself, when you're on LinkedIn and you see an ad, if someone says, buy now, contact me, it, it's not really the place for, you know, to do that because we're on LinkedIn, we're trying to be educated, entertained, doing information, right? So typically the way that you approach LinkedIn ads, at least at the, at the beginning or when you're prospecting and prospecting means, right, people that don't really know you. So the type of ad that you're going to show to them is more top of funnel and it's be more about education, entertainment, and you, we usually use the term collateral piece. What's that piece of collateral? What's that white paper, case study, webinar that you could hook someone in to introduce your brand to? And so, and, and what happens is when they see that, oh, cool, this is so interesting, they give you their information, they download that, and now you have a lead. Now, yes, that lead's not necessarily ready to buy, but it's the opening to a relationship. And then there's steps you got to do afterwards but that's sort of the idea. So the people who are thinking coming on LinkedIn and suddenly getting people to purchase or, yeah, I'm ready to give you a PO for a million dollars, right? No, that's <laughs> not what happens. Yeah. And if you do approach it that way, you're going to be, you know, but if you approach it in the correct way and understand your marketing funnels, understand where it is and what you need to do afterwards to nurture that lead, it can be extremely successful. And it's funny because you wouldn't go on a trade show, right? And go, hey, are you going to give me a million dollar order at the trade show? No, if you got someone to accept a meeting with you at a trade show, if you got four meetings set up at a trade show, you'd be super happy. And but then we go to LinkedIn and we're like, why aren't you generating me cont- money like cash machine? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's amazing that mindset shift that people have between like what works in real life and they're and but they want digital and uh, to work in a different way. Um, so tell me a little bit about how you develop the strategy for them, especially the content strategy. Sure. So from a content perspective, when it came to top of funnel, we had two ideas. So one was just simply like they have a lot of buying guides. So, right. They have a certain product. They've got like a 20 page guide. And the idea was, okay, check this out. State of the art, um, retractor systems can help you for this and that. Um, give us your information to download the guide. So that's like nothing too crazy. But what also actually worked really cool was, was video. And I know I, you like that. (laughs) The cool thing about videos. So in this case, it was actually a 3d animation and what it does, it was pretty cool. It's a, imagine a a body, but like a see-through body. And it basically was rotating 360 degrees. And as it rotates, the different parts of the body highlight, and as that part highlights, they show the product that they use that helps open, you know, the body for that area. And that's pretty cool if you think about it. So we're talking about like a video. I think it was like, I don't remember if it was 30 or a minute, but the bottom line is this really cool animation that draws you in and quickly tells you all, all the different areas. And I'll tell you why that's so important. Because in LinkedIn, you've got really good targeting features, mm-hmm. but if I let's say only want to target neurosurgeons, it's hard on LinkedIn. Why? Mm-hmm. Because does every neurosurgeon in his title say that I'm a neurosurgeon? Not necessarily. Sometimes they'll just say I'm a surgeon, right? So sometimes when you want to get to these very specific groups, right? In a perfect world, I could target neurosurgeons. My ad or my video would exactly be about neurosurgeons, but sometimes it's hard to do that. Um, so therefore, sometimes you have to go to a larger audience. And in that case, you only have got, what, what do they say? Like, you know, six seconds to catch their attention. Yeah. How can we show them something that will incorporate most of that audience so that they'll be interested? 
And I, what I love about this is it comes back to, uh, you know, we've had Perry Marshall on a few times and he's an awesome genius marketer. And he has this idea of, you know, the, the racking the shotgun. And where you walk in a room and you rack the shotgun and anyone that turns their head knows what a shotgun sounds like. And that's, you know, the people that you actually, in his case, don't want to talk to. But in your standpoint, you know, because for the most part, people, if they're not in this industry, are not going to want to watch that animation. I know I wouldn't watch that animation. I'd probably pass out watching it. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, I coincidentally, my wife and co-founder actually started in medical animation in college. And so I'd have to watch some of those and I'd be like, <laughs> but um, bring, it, bring it back bad memories. Huh? <laughs> yeah, we were like, when we you're talking about, it, I'm like, la, la, la. Uh, but so. Okay, so you get this content, which I love because you you know you've you have this t targeting strategy and it, it really draws people out. Did it work right away? Did this content strategy work right away? So what I would say is, it works. It did work because we were able to get leads, you know, between a hundred and two hundred dollars. However, once again, it takes time, right? Because the strategy is, you know. People download the content. Now you reach out to them to say, you know, thank you for downloading the content. If you need anything, let me know. You know, so not everyone's going to respond to you. Some people respond right away. Yeah. Oh, wow. You know, I need retractor systems. That's great. Other people, you know, they're put into the funnel, right? And when I say funnel, like now they're added to your email list and you have a drip campaign or they're put up on your follow follow up list. So with regards to getting that initial lead, yes, it did work right away. But you have to remember that the after effect and like the percentage of those people who are ready to like speak and have an appointment, right? So that's something that you have to optimize um, because we were doing, I, I wouldn't say a global campaign, but it was pretty international. It just wasn't the US. And when you do that, sometimes, you know, um, the, 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 the advertising systems, and this happens with Facebook ads as well. Like it sees, oh, leads are coming from India, right? Let's get a lot of leads from India. <laughs> and, and, you know, those might not be the ones that you want, right? And then, but only afterwards do you realize, okay, you know, you said you wanted India, but it looks like that's taking most of the budget. Maybe we need to pare down a little bit from there. Yeah. And, and that's, I mean, that's interesting because you have to go that way, but you have to look at it, but doesn't, it works, but you find out what works and make it better, correct? It's not like it's perfect right out of the bat. No, exactly. And so the example that I like to give, and usually I give this to my students, um, cause I also teach at university and what I, what, what, what I say is like, I say, Hey guys, do you like shark tank? And everyone's like, you know, half the room's like, yeah, of course we like shark tank. I'm like, think about Mark Cuban. He invests in 10 companies. Do you think he does well in each one of those? And the, and the, and the answer is no, right? Maybe one or two do well. So when we think about a campaign the same way, I start off a campaign, I invest money in 10 areas. Let's say that's 10 campaigns, 10 audiences, 10 ads, whichever way you want to break it down. And you know that right off the gate. Not all 10 are going to work, maybe one or two. And if you're great, maybe five, right? But let's say only one works. So yes, that first month, you know, you invested $10 in each, 90 bucks down, nothing happened. But that $10 did do well. So yes, that first month, you're definitely not doing well. But now you've figured out the thing that works. And that's the concept. Afterwards, that's the concept of scaling, taking that concept and scaling it up and saying, okay, what can we do now to we know this audience works. What can we do to spend more money, expand it, and to work? And then over time, yes, month two, you might break, you know, break even. Month three, now, now you're making money. And therefore, it is a long-term game because, it, 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 I mean, I would say uh, even like just people that I speak to, I've never really heard someone that like hit the jackpot month one, but often clients expect you to hit the jackpot in month one. Yes. And that's, I think that's where people say marketing doesn't work, right? Is because they expect it in month one or they're getting leads. I've had clients that are like, oh, I, you know, I, I haven't closed any business. And, and I'm like, well, how many leads did you get? Like 90? I'm like, yeah. And they're like, I'm like, you know, and they're in very specific industries. I'm not like, and in that mindset, it's, it, it hurts them. And I think it's so important for people to realize that mindset of this is a long game. Because if any of us could generate leads that convert into dollars in month one, we probably wouldn't be here talking. We just have our own business. <laughs> um, and I think there's a lot of people out there selling that idea of 60, you know, 90 days. But really, especially when you're talking these types of businesses, these types of clients, you know, these big purchase orders aren't happening 
overnight. No one's waking up going, I need a million dollars in retractors tomorrow, are they? <laughs> nope. Or, I mean, maybe, but, you know, it doesn't come that often. And, and I think, that, and based on that point, I think it, it really, that's why you really need buy, buy-in and a good understanding for, with the sales team. Because the marketers can go only so far, but if the sales team aren't buy into the, bought into the process and understanding the type of leads that they're getting, right? Like we did this with another company. I don't want to name what it was, but it was like, you know, similar concept, more top of funnel, more prospecting, not necessarily people ready to go. And these guys, and we told them, but for some reason that message wasn't passed on. As soon as the person downloaded that like brochure, or that information, they pick up the phone. Hey, are you ready to become a partner? And like, of course, we see we look in the spreadsheet and it's like, you know, no, 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 no. And I'm like, but we don't like, are you telling them that how this person met your company and what they did? And I mean, so it, it it's funny because as marketers, like we do so much, but we also rely on other people and other parts of the organization in order for this whole thing to work. I saw a funny thing in, um, about, SEO, about SEO, and I know we're not talking about that, but I saw a tweet yesterday. It's sort of like, when SEO works well, then every, you know, all the departments take credit. When SEO doesn't work well, then the marketing department gets the blame. So yep. I think it, 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 that really rings true. Yeah, or SEO does work well, but it doesn't get, you know, they're not doing their job and they're not following up. Uh, yeah, the SEO gets the blame still. The leads, it, they're not good leads on the internet. <laughs> exactly. Awesome. So, tell me in the end, what were the results that you you've got from them? You said a hundred or two hundred dollars a lead. Can you tell me, you know, the results, some of the high at level results that you've got for them? Yeah. So high level, I would say that um, of those leads that come in, about five percent like want to have a meeting right away, which is pretty cool. Um, and the rest, you know, are nurtured. And you know, so when we think about Overall, like going back, when they were used to spending, you know, let's say, let's just make the the, the numbers simple, right? If they spent fifty thousand dollars on a trade show and they got fifty leads, right, at a thousand dollars each, now what we're doing is we're generating a hundred dollars a lead, so that's ten times fifty, that's five hundred. <laughs> so basically, it's so if you think it's like ten xing the leads, which is like that's crazy. Yeah, and and you know. You, I think at that point you have a much more engaged lead too, because if I gave out, if I got 10 leads at a trade show and you know, there's a lot of those people that just walked by and they gave my, gave my information that super excited about what you're talking about. They didn't get educated and you know, probably two out of those 10 really remember what you did. Uh, but when someone's intentionally downloading this, that means they have some desire to understand this thing. I mean, I, it, like I tell people attorney videos, I'm like, no one's watching attorney videos on Friday night. You know, if you, ha if you have a thousand video views, it means that there's a thousand people that had a, a lot legal problem. Same thing here, right? Yeah, I, I agree with that point that, that even if we're like looking at that 10 X, but I, I think we, like what you're saying is a lead that you're getting from digital that itself already has additional value than most of those leads that come in from a trade show. Awesome. Awesome. So Danny, if people want to get in touch with you, what's the best way to uh, follow you and to get in touch with Optage? Yeah, sure. So Optage, um, you can reach us at optage.com, O-P-T-I-D-G-E. And me personally, um, I'm active on Twitter and LinkedIn. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn at dannygavin.me and on Twitter, hashtag, or I guess, um, <laughs> what's it called? At Danny Gavin. Nice. Nice. Uh, awesome. Awesome. So we'll put all those links in the show notes. Uh, and, uh, you know, Danny, thank you so much for being on the Garlic Marketing Show. Pleasure, Ian. I'm so excited I was able to be here today. And thank you all for taking Danny and I on your journey. This has been Ian Garlic and the Garlic Marketing Show. All right. That was awesome. Let's do the intro real quick. All right. Um, welcome to the Garlic Marketing Show. Ian Garlic here. And today we're going to talk about LinkedIn ads, specifically a case story for LinkedIn ads for healthcare, where a healthcare company, a healthcare medical device company wasn't um, doing so well because trade shows got shut down. And they came to Danny Gavin, our guest today at Optage, and Danny was able to 10x the results with LinkedIn. Well, really infinitely, because the trade shows were gone, <laughs> infinitely improved the results with LinkedIn. And uh, so, Dane, thank you so much for being on the show. My pleasure. It's so cool to be here. 
And don't forget this is brought to you by videocasestory.com. As we're gonna to talk to, about today, one of the best pieces of content on LinkedIn and anywhere in videos, and one of the best pieces of content are your client and customer stories. Go to videocasestory.com and learn how to easily collect, craft, and deliver them, as well as 50 ways to use them throughout your marketing. And so the other thing we're talking about today, you know, when we go through day, we're gonna talk about the wrong mindset in LinkedIn ads, the type of LinkedIn ads that worked for them. Um, why targeting uh, LinkedIn ads in healthcare it can be difficult and how they overcame it. The cost of leads that they got for healthcare, which was is pretty phenomenal when you think about it in comparison to the trade show. And what I'm super excited for you to learn is Danny's uh, Shark Take Investor Strategy for using LinkedIn ads. Awesome, well, let's get to it.